Okay, hello and uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Nunchauskas. Today is the 20th of March uh, 2020, so yep, uh, welcome everyone guys. Welcome to this Friday's uh, morning session. Uh, which is recorded, of course, for obvious reasons, um, as I've mentioned throughout this whole week. Uh, but as always, guys, before we jump in, before we start looking at the charts, let's quickly have a read through our uh, risk disclaimers. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our JD YouTube channel to which you can always um, subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JD Bank website and specifically our JD Research page, which we update on a daily basis. So yeah, guys, feel free to visit us here on JD Bank and click on the Research tab right there. So, and uh, yep, I hope you can find a lot of useful information here. So uh, before uh, jumping into the charts, as well as it becomes now a, a small tradition, quickly let's have a look what's happening with the coronavirus and uh, what is what is the latest data. And uh, as we can see, yesterday we've climbed above the 240,000. Um, and the most important, of course, we that we unfortunately we have climbed above the uh, the 10,000 mark now. So we are now in the 10,000s um, and another thing you know it happened yesterday that Italy overcame uh, the uh, we overcame China by the amount of deaths deaths from the coronavirus so um, of course this is not really um, uh, really kind of uh, good I would say um, if I can this is the soft version of how to say it basically uh, but um, one thing for sure is that looking at this graph here underneath uh, we can see that the um, other locations which uh, apart from China have slowed down a little bit so maybe just maybe this could be uh, that little breath of fresh air for the markets as well so and this leads me into DAX for example here so yesterday we had a nice um, push uh, to the upside yesterday uh, the German index closed in the positive territory but still remained uh, uh, below this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 5th of March um, so if we look at the cash index right now we can see that the price is already um, above the 8,700 mark, this one that I mentioned here, and it, the price is currently trading at around 8,814 uh, zone on, on uh, 14 uh, on the cash index. So basically um, there could be a possibility for a larger correction of course initially we will target this level here, the 9,141 zone which is the high of the, um, the 17th of March but um, of course, if this if this is just seen as a temporary obstacle, then yep, we could maybe see this one going a little bit further north. For now, uh, for now, guys, yep, keep your eyes on this one. It could be quite interesting. So, like I said, uh, it will be very interesting if we get a push above the 9,144 zone. So, in a way, uh, a move up until here could be possible. Could be quite possible given the uh, slight positivity to uh, a slight. I wouldn't even say positivity, but uh, the, to the fact that the numbers have slowed down a little bit on the uh, and the people getting infected. Um, so, yep, uh, that's why we will maybe, like I said, maybe this could be enough to lead um, uh, the indices a little bit to the upside for a larger correction. Um, so, yep, guys, for now, be very careful, be very cautious. Um, of course, uh, like I said, continue monitoring the markets, but from the technical side, uh, specifically for DAX, uh, keep your eyes on this 9,141 zone. Uh, like I said, this is going to be our first target, uh, maybe for today. Um, and if that gets uh, broken, then yep, it, we will aim for even larger, uh, a larger correction for, for now, correction to the down to the upside. So yep, keep your eyes on that one, guys. Um, 
now then, uh, jumping into FTSE 100 very quickly. So the similar story here. Um, the FTSE is currently trading at around 5,284 mark. So basically above its uh, yesterday's uh, close. Uh, but it's not far from uh, the the high of the um, 18th of March, which is around the 5,295 zone. So basically the um the the price is currently slightly below that uh but that said if we get a nice push above this then yep uh, we will aim for uh, a further move higher uh, a further possible move higher so initially we will target this 5500 zone uh it just to remind you what that level was in the past I need to scroll, uh, scroll back a little bit here, guys. So that's basically the lowest point of 2016. So um, if we get a push up towards that, then uh, if we get a push above the 5,995, 5,295, then yes, the next potential target is around the 5,500 level, and then we'll take it from there because if it pushes further north, yes, then we'll start aiming for this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 24th of February. So keep your eyes on this one, guys. In case this doesn't travel uh, higher and starts falling straight away for us now to get comfortable with some lower levels initially we need to see a drop below this 4979 zone because as you can see yes it keeps getting broken but um in a way um this kind of level still acts as a good area of support even actually we could even raise this a little bit just uh around the 5006 zone just to make it a nice good beautiful number of uh, 5000 so if it drops below the 5000 mark then yep there could be a possibility for further declines here so that's why we will take a, a slightly conservative approach in terms of the downside um and uh, wait for a drop below the psychological 5000 mark first um Gold. So uh, gold, after selling off yesterday, it's climbing up. Uh, climbing up today, um, it's currently getting a hold up near the 200-day EMA here. Um, it remains in this little tricky spot here because it's it's um, overall, of course, it's still above. Uh, it's still within an uptrend. Uh, we are still uh, trading above this upside support line taken from the lowest point of August 2018. Um, but it, as you can see, this level here, uh, the 1445 kind of continues to act as a good support area um, but on the other hand we are below this uh, up this other slightly steeper upside support line uh, taken from the low of the 24th or uh, 23rd of May somewhere around there um, so in a way we're kind of stuck in limbo here a little bit we, we cannot really talk about the upside and we cannot really uh, talk about the downside yet so in a way for us to get comfortable with uh, with lower levels, we need to see a drop below the 1445 zone, and then we will aim for uh, for further declines uh, and further declines only up until this upside support line. So, yep, uh, yep, guys. For now, be very careful. Um, in terms of the upside, uh, again, we will we have to take a more conservative appro approach here and and wait for a push above the 1575 zone uh, here, uh, and only then kind of aim for higher levels because this would place the price back above this steeper upside line and um, yep maybe more buyers could be joining in here so that's why anything up until here it will be seen as it kind of as a neutral uh, territory here and uh, we, we're not going to do anything um, jumping into uh, WTI oil now so having a nice boost here and having a nice rebound from the uh, psychological that psychological 20 zone um, so good good sign for the Bulls. Um, the the price is currently balancing near this key area of um, of resistance. Um, oh, sorry, resistance of well, actually, resistance previously acting as good support level. So um, now now you can see that um, we need to see what's going to happen further because if the weekly candle stays below this territory, below this lowest point of 2016 then, well, I mean, further declines could be possible. But if we get a nice push here higher and we see the price staying above the this level, above this territory here, which is um, around the 26 mark, so the, 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 the lowest point of 2016 was around the 26.06 mark. So if it stays above that territory, then, yep, uh, we could see maybe a bit of a, a larger correction uh, going into next week. So something like that, guys, something to consider, something to keep an eye on. 
uh, but for now uh, we'll remain very cautious uh, for today you could keep your eyes on this level here the 27.40 if we get a push above this then maybe we could see this one climbing up here but don't forget that we also could be seeing we could be getting a false breakout as well so again it's a very tricky spot here but the only thing I would probably suggest is to keep an eye on the weekly candle and wait and keep this this I uh, keep this one for next week um, and uh, yep like I said guys keep your eyes on the weekly candle uh, silver very quickly on that also getting a nice rebound I talked about this one uh, yesterday and uh, basically um, after it found good support around here, around the 11.64 zone, uh, it rebounded and is now, you can see, that trying to climb uh, higher. The bulls are really, uh, really onto it right now. And uh, the big question here is, will this be a nice larger correction or we actually this is a or, or actually will this be a nice recovery here or will this be just a part of a, lar a larger correction and then we'll see another round of selling so for now um you can see that yes we do have some interesting levels here especially this uh lowest point of 2015 which is around the 13.65 zone um in a way it, it could travel all the way higher here um so actually let's see let's grab a fibonacci here and see uh where it means some of these levels could lie here so um, you can see that, yes, the first one that we're approaching, of course, is the 23.6, which is around the 13.03 mark. So keep your eyes on that one today. Um, this level here, the lowest point of 2015, is just slightly below the 38.2% on Fibonacci. Um, again, uh, we'll keep an eye on this one. We'll, slightly above that, we do have the uh, this 38.2%, this so uh, at, which is around the 13.90 level. Um, in a way, even if let's say this pushes further north and climbs above the 23.6, um, then yes, we will aim for this 13.65 uh, zone, but also don't forget that we may get a, a, a nice false uh, overshoot here, um, an overshoot, and then uh, still it would end up closing below this territory. And if so, and if something like this would happen, then, well, I mean, guess what? We could see another round of selling here. So for now, yes, the, the commodity, the precious metal, is going for a bit of a correction. Uh, let's see if it can go above the 23.6%. For now, this is what we're going to be targeting. Uh, that's around the 13.03 level. If um, if it overcomes this, then yes, we will aim for that lowest point of 2015, around the 13.65. Slightly above that, we do have that 38.2 zone, and then yep, we'll take it from there. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, this is the of course the um, the the main scenario. The alternative scenario is well, we would like to see. To be honest, we would like to see this one climbing back up above this upside support line, taken from the low of the uh, the low of the 14th or uh, third. Is that 4th, 14th or 13th? The 14th of November to, uh, 2018. Um, we would like to see a, a push back above this upside line and then aim for higher levels uh, because for now uh, it's kind of still tricky, guys. So, yep, uh, keep your eyes on these levels first with the ones that I've mentioned. Uh, Ripple, very quickly on that. So, I've talked about Ripple yesterday and what I was saying that uh, we are aiming right now for a bit of correction. So, that's perfect. So, we managed to uh, travel closer to this key area of uh, of resistance, which which previously acted as good area of support, and uh, that's the lowest point of uh, of uh, 2019, um, and that's roughly around the 0 0.1760. So. As you can see, the crypto traveled higher, almost managed to test that area, um, got held here, and now it's kind of reversing. Don't get me wrong, we still have a full day to tr go through, um, the weekend as well, so yep. Um this could be, uh, this could in a way still climb a bit higher, test this downside line, and then sell off. So something to keep in mind, guys, uh, because for us to get comfortable with slightly higher levels, ideally we would like to see a push above the 0 0.1990 zone, which is the low here of 9th of March, and then, yep, we could aim for for further upside. Uh, there are some bunch of resistance levels here, of course, but uh, don't get me wrong, we will get to those if we get that push above the 0 0.1990 level. So for now, we are more more bearish than bullish because we're still below this downside resistance line and if it continues continues to hold we could see another round of selling AUDJPY. So I haven't looked at this one for quite a while and uh, let me just get rid of some of these lines but basically this week uh, we saw a heavy sell-off and uh, the pair drifted lower tested the 59.90 zone from which it rebounded and is now pushing uh, higher again. Um, now 
we are trading still below this tentative uh, short-term tentative downside resistance line so in a way we could keep an eye on this one I mean we're not going to focus on this too much because again it's a very tentative one we can draw the a lot of these here but for now yeah we'll see how it performs around here um, you can see that the pair is trying to make its way higher trying to recover um, so the the upside for us maybe from the short term perspective the upside would come here if we get a break of this downside line and a push above the 67.37 zone here which is the high of the 16th of march and uh, then yep we would aim for higher levels but even then the uh, those higher levels could be limited uh, our upside could be limited near this downside resistance this this other tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the 16th of january so in a way uh kind of that's why uh, all of these ten our lines are tentative that's why we're focusing more on support and resistance levels here at the moment um in a way, like I said, for now, yes, keep your eyes on some of these levels. You can see that the pair is traveling higher, is at least it's trying to do so. Um, let's see if, if it continues to push higher, and if it does, then let's see if this downside line holds, because if it does, then yep, we could uh, see another round of selling. In case this decides not to travel all the way higher here and starts reversing earlier, for us to uh, consider uh, the downside again, at least in the near term, we'll, we would like to see a drop below the today's low. Uh, which is around the 62.80 zone. So then, yep, we could aim for uh, the next level here, the low of the 18th of March, which is which is around the 61.70 zone. And then, yep, for to maybe even towards back towards the um, towards the uh, the lowest point of this week, uh, which is around the 59.90 level. But in other words, uh, a drop below this territory here could do the trick here for more sellers. For now, we are aiming for the upside, uh, a little bit for the upside, but again, we'll be very cautious and we'll see how it performs around this downside line. Uh, USD CAD. Now, um, yesterday I talked about this one and working out perfectly. So uh, let me just re uh, refresh uh, everything. So basically what I was talking about yesterday that we uh, I was looking for a drop below this level here, below the uh, 1.14, uh, 1.4432 zone. Um, what I was saying that if we get a nice, good, strong move here below this, then yes, uh, we could see uh, a further decline. So we didn't get a uh, we didn't get a strong move, but we got a nice at least a four hour candle close, which we will well to be honest we'll take that. And uh, you can see that now the the, the pair is drifting lower. Uh, what I was talking about yesterday was that if we get a drop below this 1.4432, then we'll start aiming for these levels. The um, the of course one of our main targets is going to be this one right here the uh, 1.4162 zone and slightly below that we do have this upside support line taken from the low of the 6th of march which in a way could come into play as well um for now let's keep it short and simple don't get me wrong we even could get a hold up around here somewhere around the 1.4277 zone which is the high of the 17th of march um so that's why for now we will keep it short and simple yes we will continue targeting the down Downside. Uh, we will aim for this 1.4277 level first, but if that gets uh, broken, then well, the next target for us is around here, around the low of the 18th of March, which is around the uh, 1.4162 level, that I'm, the one that I've just mentioned. Um, and yep, if the selling continues, of course, uh, well, straightforward, uh, we need to see, we, we could see uh, a, a test of this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 6th of March. So keep your eyes on this one. In case this suddenly reverses, or let's say suddenly starts reversing earlier to the um, to the upside, now we will aim for higher levels if we get a push above the 1.44, 1.4536 zone. This is the high of yesterday. And if we get a push above this, then yes, we will aim for the upside again. So that's why, long story short, guys, these are to, uh, for now the levels for us, uh, especially for today. And if we get a strong push back above the 1.4536 zone, then yes, we will aim for the uh, 1.4690 level. That's the highest point of 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just quickly confirm that. Uh, 16 or 15? Uh, that's 16. There we go. So the highest point of 2016. So it could be met. Uh, for now, uh, for now, yep. Keep your eyes on this one. Uh, GBP USD. Uh, so uh, perfect move higher. 
perfect test of this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 11th of March. This is what I talked about yesterday. Um, so it worked out perfectly, or actually it's still working out perfectly because uh, the idea, the main idea was that if we get a nice recovery, this could lead to a test of this downside line, which we already got. And uh, now the big question here is, can this curve happen? Um, continue observing this one, continue observing the price action here because we are keeping a close eye on, on this territory here because uh, for this probably I would need to jump into a daily chart. Uh, but anyway, before I jump into a daily chart, um, we keep your eyes on this on this downside line. If it holds we and we see a nice reversal here back to the downside, this could lead towards this key area of support around the 1.1446. Um, don't get me wrong, the pair dropped a little bit lower yesterday here to the 1.1407, um, but if those two fail to with pro fail to provide decent support, we could see this one drifting further uh, further south. Again, for now, all eyes are on this downside line. And as I promised, da the daily chart, because for us to consider some higher levels, uh, we would like to see a push above the uh, 1.1950 zone. That's basically the lowest point of 2016 and the lowest point of 2019. Uh, uh, so basically around here, around here, around this 19, 1.1950 zone. So a nice good push above that could in a way uh, lead towards slightly higher levels. The other level that I've got marked here, the 1.1880 uh, zone, and let me just show you what that level is. And for this, I need to jump into a monthly chart so uh, you can see how far we have traveled and basically we are now kind of sitting uh, near levels well actually testing levels of 1985 um, but this level here the uh, the 1.1880 uh, is the low uh, the low of uh, May of 1985, guys. So this is how far we have traveled. Uh, so yep, uh, again the lowest point of uh, the lowest point of 2000 and oh sorry 1985 is. Um, is around the 1.0520 mark. Of course, we are a little bit further away from that, from hitting that area, but still could be possible. But again, uh, we what we're going to do here, as I've mentioned to you uh, previously, we will keep an eye on the monthly candle because if the pair stays below this and it closes the monthly candle below all this territory here, all this highlighted territory, then well, I mean, this could not look good for uh, GBP USD in the near future. So yep, uh, for now, keep your eyes on this one. And finally, Euro dollar. Uh, so for this, let me just quickly jump into a four hour chart. So managed to uh, drop all the way here, managed to create a new low for uh, for this year um, and uh, last time it has been at these levels at around 1.0 uh, 1.06 uh, 1.0650 last time it has been here was back here in 2017 um, around April time so around mid April that's how far we have traveled this is the daily chart you can see this the slope um, and uh, yep for now the big question here is looking even like looking at this daily chart can we stay above this uh, the low, the previous low of of of, two, of 2020 of 2020, or the previous low of February, um, or not the previous low, but the uh, the lowest point of February 2020, which is around the 1.0777 zone, so approximately around there. So if we can stay above this, then maybe if we can see the weekly candle closing above that, then yes, there could be a bit of hope. Uh, but to be honest. Uh, we are seeing this sharp reversal already to the upside um, already very early in the morning. So, I mean, either this is going to be a huge uh, push higher today, um, a huge move to the upside, uh, a huge correction to the upside this, this today, either this is it. Either this is where it's going to get held and we will see this one retracing back down here, not falling maybe all the way here towards the yesterday's lows, but... Um, maybe sliding back somewhere around here and staying somewhere around this territory, somewhere around the 1.07 mark. So that's why, guys, be very careful. Like I said, this is a very key, important area of resistance right now. Um, as I said, if we get a strong push higher, then we might be seeing, like I said, a very strong move uh, today at the one that we like, the one that we, we saw yesterday. Um, but again, uh, I 
kind of little oh, well again it's friday i mean anything could happen fridays are sometimes um sometimes very tricky so uh that's why guys for now basically probably keep your eyes on just keep your eyes on the uh, 1.0777 or even the 1.08 level if we get a nice weekly close above this then uh we could see um a nice uh, well a nice push maybe higher next week but if um, if the pair uh, gets a hold up near this level, near this territory here, now this is where we could see a bit of a, an, another maybe possible uh, slide here uh, going back towards the 1.07 level. We'll take it from there. Uh, for now, keep your eyes on this one. Uh, it's very interesting here, guys. Very exciting uh, times, I would say. Um, and uh, yep, very, very interesting moves in the market right now. So let's see where all this leads to. Anyway, I hope you found it useful, guys. Thank you very much for sticking around and watching this recorded uh, session uh, till the end. Um, thank you very much. I really ap appreciate your patience. I really appreciate your uh, your support and everything. So, uh, guys, yep, I, I hope you all stay safe, um, both market-wise, financially, financial-wise, and uh, health-wise, of course. That's the most important, guys. Anyway, um, I'll see you, uh, we'll catch up on Monday, we'll see, uh, or actually, no, not Monday, still Trader's Tea Time later on, 14.15, so yep, I uh, <laughs> wanted to get, I wanted to finish my week earlier, I can see that, so, uh, cat, let's catch up on 14.15 uh, GMT today, later on, 14.15 GMT, so yep, guys, at my Trader's Tea Time, and uh, yep, we'll have a look at some of these instruments again, some new ones, and we'll see how the markets have played during this uh, these hours bye bye